Welcome to Electron Line. In previous videos, we had shown you how to find the interference pattern of a double slit or multi slit interference problem. Recent videos, we've also shown you how through a single slit you have a diffraction pattern, but what we've ignored in the past was even with double slits or multiple slits, not only do we have an interference pattern, we also have a diffraction pattern. And so we actually have the two patterns superimposed on each other, where in the previous videos we completely ignored the diffraction pattern. In a lot of cases, that is okay to do for the first so many fringes or first so many maxima, but eventually, there will be some relationship there that we have to be aware of that we have to take into account. So here we're going to lay the foundation of the understanding of how to include a diffraction pattern with an interference pattern. In the previous video, we calculated the angular size of the central maximum of a diffraction pattern with a very skinny, with a very small slit or thin slit. We have a relatively wide diffraction pattern, therefore a relatively wide central maximum. We calculated the angle of central maximum to be 0.573 degrees. So now we're going to do the same thing with an interference pattern. We're going to have a double slit. The slits are a distance d apart from one another, and it, the width of each slit is going to be a, which is the same size as it is over here. But for now, we're going to ignore the diffraction pattern of these slits. So a is going to be equal to 0 0.1 millimeter, 0 0.1 millimeter, and we're going to make the distance between the slits equal to one millimeter, the wavelength. Let's keep it at 500 nanometers like we did before. So what is the central maximum of the width of the central maximum in terms of angle in a interference pattern with a double slit like that? Well, the same thing again. We know that the extra distance traveled is equal to the distance between the slits times sine theta. And we know that the phase angle is going to be equal to the extra distance traveled divided by the wavelength times 2 pi. So in this case, that's going to be d sine theta divided by lambda times 2 pi. And when do we have, how do we figure out the width of the central maximum? Well, we have to measure the distance from the minimum on one side to the minimum on the other side. And the minimum occurs with an interference pattern when the extra distance traveled, when the phase difference is equal to lambda over 2. So if we replace theta by, um, not lambda over, yeah, lambda over 2. So, lambda, so we set that equal to lambda over 2 is equal to d sine theta divided by lambda times 2 pi. So lambda divided by 2, that's a half a wavelength, that's equal to pi, so we can write pi here. So pi is equal to d sine theta times 2 pi divided by lambda. And so you can see you can cancel out a pi on both sides, so this becomes 1. And then if we, si then, if we then make the approximation that the sine of theta is approximately equal to theta, when the angles are very small in radians, we can then say that and bring the lambda across here, we say lambda is equal to d times theta times 2, and finally solving this for theta, we get theta is equal to, uh, let's see here, uh, lambda divided by 2d, and of course then if we calculate for the total width, angular width of the central maximum, which is 2 theta, we can then come up here and write that the, the alpha is equal to 2 theta, which is going to be equal to twice this distance, or lambda divided by d lambda divided by d. So the central max width in angle is going to be equal to 500 nanometers divided by the distance between them which is one millimeter which is equal to and just to make sure we don't make a mistake that's 500 e to the 9 minus divided by 0 0.001 that would be 5 times 10 to the minus 4 5 times 10 to the minus 4 radians and of course, when we convert that to degrees, we multiply it times 57.3, and we get alpha is equal to 0 0.02865 degrees. All right. Now notice here, the angular width of the center maximum of that fraction pattern was 0.573 degrees. The angular size of the interference pattern is 0 0.02865 degrees. Now you're wondering, what is the ratio between them? Okay, well, 
since the distance between the slits was 10 times the actual slit width, so there's a 10 to 1 ratio between the distance between the slits and the actual slit width, what will be the ratio between the angular size of the central maximum in the diffraction pattern and the angular size of the central maximum in an interference pattern? So let's go ahead and do that. So alpha of the diffraction divided by alpha of the interference pattern is equal to 0.573 degrees divided by 0.0286 oops, yeah, 65 degrees and that turns out to be exactly a 20 to 1 ratio that's very interesting so if the ratio between the of the, dis of the distance between the slits to the slit width is 10 to 1, then the ratio of the angular size of the central maximum of the diffraction pattern and the central maximum of the interference pattern is 20 to 1. Wow, that's interesting. So it's twice the ratio of the relative size of the interference pattern to the diffraction pattern as it is to the slit width and the distance between the slits. That's really interesting. So let me make a leap here. Then the next question would be, well, if the diffraction pattern is much wider than the interference pattern, that means we can have a lot of interference pattern loops or maxim mins within the one central maximum of the diffraction pattern, and that's exactly what happens. So what happens here is when we have a double slit situation where each of the slits cause a diffraction pattern, and the fact that we have two slits cause an interference pattern, what happens is we'll have a diffraction pattern that looks like this, an interference pattern that looks like this, superimposed. Like that, and the same on the other side. Now, what happens is, depending upon the relative size of the width of the slits and the distance between the slits, the number of these fringes, as we call the number of max and mins that we have of interference patterns relative to the central max of the diffraction pattern, depends upon this ratio. If the ratio is 20 to 1, that means in the one central max of the diffraction pattern, we'll have 20 maximi, the central maximum, plus 19 more, both sides, 20 altogether, we'll have 20 of these uh, when it comes down to the interference pattern oscillations like that. Now, if the ratio is 40 to 1, they'll, ha they'll have 40 of them. If it's 10 to 1, there'll be 10 of them. If it's 2 to 1, there'll only be 2 of them. And so in the next several videos, we'll explore that particular phenomenon and then actually calculate the intensity both in terms of diffraction and interference because sometimes we have to take both of them into account. All right, so that way at least you see that when we have double slits, not only do we have to worry about the interference pattern, we also have to worry about the diffraction pattern. And then ultimately, besides just looking at it separately like this, these are the equations for the interference pattern, these are the equations for the diffraction pattern, we're going to combine them into one single equation describing the intensity as a function of both the diffraction and the interference. And here you can see why we have to do that. So, if you're interested, stay tuned. I will show you a few more videos on how we combine both interference and diffraction.